Welcome, gentle folk and rough folk. Welcome to another review. There has been a lot going on. It has been a minute, but I am excited to be back. Among other chaos, I got very lucky this week and was able to snag this set at a local grocery store ahead of release. I have no clue why it rang up before the street date, and I hope that I don't get anybody in trouble by reviewing it. I figured that since it's ahead of release, I'd go ahead and review it early since... I don't get that chance very often. I definitely only grabbed it because I wanted to do the review and not because I'm a massive Iron Man fangirl. Shh. Seven six two eight eight Iron Man and Iron Legion versus Hydra Soldier catchy name, falls into a category of LEGO sets that I would describe as not quite battle packs. Other Marvel sets you might recognize in this category include Captain America's Avenging Cycle, Black Widow and Falcon Team Up, and poetically, Iron Man vs. Ultron. Personally, I really would prefer an actual battle pack set, like, say, standalone Iron Legion and Hydra battle packs, but I am willing to content myself with this option as long as LEGO doesn't stop giving us this kind of horde builder set entirely. The intended selling point of this set is clearly the minifigures, but I found the build experience for the included segment of Hydra Fortress Wall to be surprisingly good. Unlike Captain America Outrider's attack from Avengers Endgame, ostensibly, the included model is relevant and tasteful as opposed to arbitrary and silly. The set is small, it's only $20, but it does come together quite satisfyingly. Something that I particularly liked was the way that the set is detailed with snow. Since my LEGO city is set beside an alpine lake, I'm definitely going to be adapting some of these building techniques for use in my actual projects. It is certainly not every day that a set this small ends up contributing something to my actual repertoire of building techniques. The remaining details are simple and definitely play-centric, but come together satisfyingly. If I were to incorporate this into a larger model, which I actually legitimately might, I would modify some things. But for its price point, I can't fault this. Something that definitely seems like a strong suit is that I actually wouldn't mind getting multiple copies of this model as compared to an oversized Captain America motorcycle. I could see myself combining multiple sections of this wall into a larger fortress. I was already considering getting multiple copies of this set just so that I could have more copies of the Iron Legion to fill out my Avengers Tower, considering that that was one of the omitted minifigures that I was most upset about on its release. The fact that I'm potentially interested in using multiple copies of the actually included model as well is icing on the cake. It's also worth noting here that the build is almost exactly the right size to fit into those display cases for minifigures that are designed to fit tiny dioramas behind them, if you're into that sort of thing. Man, I really want to digs for Fig's minifigure display case. For the price, I can't complain about this building experience. I'm gonna give it a 6 out of 10. Moving right along, the overwhelming winner here is the minifigures. The Iron Man and Hydra Trooper both seem to be duplicated in the upcoming Avengers Assemble Age of Ultron set, but considering that one of my bigger complaints about this set was that I wanted a full box of Hydra minifigures, I'm disinclined to hold that against this set. You can probably guess where I personally stand on having duplicate Iron Man minifigures, but from a more general audience perspective, I do kind of wish that the Iron Man had been substituted for another Hydra Trooper, for this exact reason, honestly. The Iron Legion minifigures might honestly be my favorite Marvel minifigures in a really long time. The addition of new shaded printing techniques really makes them pop in comparison to the original incarnation of the minifigure. I also think that it's inspired to use the comic-based Iron Man helmet that doesn't have a faceplate hinge for these minifigures in the same set as an Iron Man that features a faceplate helmet. The difference in shape actually really underscores the fact that this is supposed to feel different. It's not an armor with a person inside, it's an automaton. These minifigures are oozing care and effort, and I really like that. To say that they are better than the majority of minifigures that came in the Avengers Tower is not really an overstatement. For what it's worth, I do think that this Iron Man minifigure is a fitting centerpiece for this set. Much like the Mark VI and Mark VII minifigures that we got last year, the addition of bright red highlights on top of the normal dark red piece makes this model absolutely pop. Furthermore, while I'm personally still a bit on the fence about the new Iron Man helmet mold, it is undeniable that the printing for the more intricate 
Age of Ultron faceplate design is spot on. The differences between this minifigure and the previous one for the Mark 43 are less noticeable, but I do think that if you're paying attention, this one does look better. Finally, we have that Hydra agent, and to be perfectly honest, it's uninspiring, but it's exactly what it needs to be. The Chitauri derivative purple and gold gear does look absolutely excellent on the white base, and I can see an army of these guys looking totally menacing in much the same way as Stormtroopers from Star Wars. I do think it's interesting putting it side by side with the previous incarnation of this that there is not an alternate face printing, but there is a helmet strap that goes underneath the helmet. I'm not entirely sure what the thought process was on that, but for the umpteenth time, realistically speaking, my biggest complaint here is just that there wasn't a second copy of this minifigure included in the set. I really do wish that it was going to be easier to amass an army of these guys, because Hydra are honestly a kind of underrepresented antagonist in Lego sets, considering how prevalent they are in the MCU and modern comics. Considering that one, there is better minifigure for money ratio in this set than in most Marvel sets, and two, all four minifigures are excellent, I can legitimately say that this is one of the best minifigure lineups I have seen in a hot minute. Unironically, this is a 10 out of 10, and I am considering getting at least two more boxes of these just for duplicate minifigures for that exact reason. Since the bulk of the set is grounded in those minifigures though, there's not a ton to talk about from a play perspective. There are a trio of stud shooters, which is kind of the definitional default play feature for LEGO. All three turrets do spin, and Iron Man and the Iron Legion are included with flying effects, which makes them de facto swooshable. For its part, the wall also does set up for some small-scale scene play. All of that combined means that this set could be a meaningful playset, especially for someone who doesn't have the budget or space for larger models. However, considering that I just put together Dr. Eggman's Death Egg Robot and can't put the set down, I don't think that I can really describe this as exceptional play value either. There is neither anything to complain about nor anything to write home about. Ultimately, what that means is that this is a 5 out of 5. Sorry, 5 out of 10. Whatever it is, it's straight down the middle of the road. Side note, I kind of regret not filming a time lapse for the Death Egg Robot because retrospectively, it would have gotten an absolutely glowing review, so if you want to see me do that, leave a comment down below and I'll think about taking it apart and putting it back together. Moving on to our final major metric, we have display value. And I'm gonna be blunt, this isn't a display set. Then again, it's 20 bucks, so no one was really expecting it to be. I do think it's worth calling out that, unlike something like the Sandman set from earlier this year, this model isn't pretending to be anything fancy, but also, its release coincides with another set based on this exact same scene. While I don't currently have my hands on a copy of 76291, The Avengers Assemble Age of Ultron, I could see myself potentially putting a couple of this smaller set alongside that one to provide some greater context and a broader scene. This isn't explicitly intended on the LEGO Group's part, but the fact that my brain goes directly there inclines me to give this set a little bit of credit on that count. It can't be completely useless as a display piece if one of my first thoughts is combine it with another display piece. Obviously, this potential value doesn't negate the set's lack of display value on its own, however. It'll earn the set a point or two back, but even considering that, I think that a 3 out of 10 is more than fair. As a quick aside before I unveil the overall score for this set, some people have expressed a desire for me to talk about the potential value of parts in a set if you were to take it apart and use it for your own mocks. For this particular set, because it's so small, there's not a ton of value in and of itself. However, it does include masonry bricks and some very cool sloped texturing on the front wall. Because of that, I could see this being something that is actually legitimately useful to get in bulk and then part out for building up some sort of larger structure in this dark sand tan color. I don't know that I would get this set hoping the parts would inspire me, but I could see myself purchasing this set to use the parts for a project that I was already planning ahead of time. That being addressed, Overall, this set scores a 6 out of 10. A solid minifigure lineup and reasonable, realistic expectations carry this set a long way in comparison to other Marvel sets in recent memory that have overpromised and underdelivered. I feel absolutely no regrets in purchasing this set or in recommending it, and while it might not be completely and totally mind-blowing, I think that just being an all-round positive experience is something that is worth celebrating.
wraps this up, I am very excited to be getting my momentum back and am hopefully going to have videos out consistently for the next couple of weeks. As always, a massive thank you to my patrons. If you want to see reviews for more of this upcoming Marvel Wave, consider giving me some support over there. Every little bit counts. In thanks for your support over there, you do get access to some cool goodies like instructions for the mocks that I post on this channel. Thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.